Well, welcome in, hockey fans. In the Desert Southwest to College Hockey Southwest Weekly. I'm your host, Scott Strandy. We're live here in the College Hockey Southwest Weekly studios in beautiful Arizona. We've got uh, coverage for you all day today from uh, all of the regional tournaments. There's two going on right now, though. Uh, there's one in uh, the West Region in Fargo, North Dakota, where number one seed St. Cloud State is taking on AIC. And the second set of games there is Denver and Ohio State. Also up in the Northeast Regional today, we have UMass and Harvard, Clarkson and Notre Dame. More importantly, though, we're talking about our Arizona State Sun Devils, who are in the uh, Midwest Regional, where they will play the last game of the opening round of the uh, Regional this year in uh, Allentown, Pennsylvania, as they'll take on the Quinnipiac Bobcats in a 7.30 Eastern Time game tomorrow, 4.30 here in the uh, Pacific Time Zone. We're looking forward to giving you all the, the scores and updates throughout the day. I will also be joined in with our man Paul Hornstein, who is our long-distance Devils, made the trip from Long Island, New York, to Allentown, PA, to bring all the action and reaction uh, from tomorrow's game to you. We've also got some uh, clips from the press conference and some of the work that Paul's done today during the practice session for Arizona State. In addition, we'll summarize the, uh, the games that are going on right now and tell you who's moving on and who isn't. But right now, let's uh, take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll do a special little feature I did at Oceanside Ice Arena. For the first time ever, Arizona State Hockey is in the NCAA Regional Tournament. And the folks over at the Pro Shop at Oceanside have got some really neat ideas for you. So look forward to that. And then we'll be right back to uh, visit with Paul Hornstein. Finish that up and we'll give you a recap of the night, the opening night of the 2019 NCAA Regional Hockey Tournament. Pre-game like a pro, post-game like a champion at College Bar and Grill. Located across the street from the iconic A Mountain and Sun Devil Stadium and a quick walk from Wells Fargo Arena, College Bar and Grill is your home for the best local craft beer, delicious creative cocktails, tasty food, and Tempe's best atmosphere for Arizona State Athletics. College Bar and Grill. Pre-game like a pro, post-game like a champion. Online at ilovecollege.co. All right, welcome in, hockey fans in the desert southwest. This is uh, a, a secret spot that I ended up at today. I ended up at the uh, the pro shop here at Oceanside Ice Arena. As you can see, there's plenty of Sun Devil gear here. As we have the uh, the Adidas official T-shirts, the Sun Devils Unite, for, uh, for made for every team here in the uh, NCAA Regional Tournament. As you can see, there's still jerseys here. There's hats, there's T-shirts, there's a little bit of everything, but... I'm bringing in Derek Jabinski, who's our uh, our official pro shop manager here. Uh, Derek, first of all, welcome in. Thank you. So we're talking NCAA regional hockey. I'm going to ask you first. Did you think that that you'd be talking NCAA regional hockey this early in in the Sun Devil history? Uh, no, I actually did not. <laughs> it's uh, it's been great. It's been a big surprise, and uh, it's uh, good for the school and good for hockey out west. The reason I wanted to step in today was to see these t-shirts. I know they just came in. So show us one of the ones that are issued by Adidas officially for everybody. And tell us how you got them and how many you got left and how people can buy them. Uh, so we got them from Adidas. Uh, they sent them out to everybody that made regionals. Uh, you can go on to devilshockey.shop, buy them on there. You can even come in here and buy them. We're open uh, about 9 to... Uh, nine on the weekends and then on uh, the weekdays we're open from 11 to about 10 o'clock at night so you can come on by and uh, we do have some NCAA uh, Frozen 4 shirts that are waiting uh, to be made if they make it which would be pretty awesome. So what's it been like so far with the, uh, the reception with you guys having the shirts and with the team what have you heard? Uh, it's been good I mean business has been good uh, the team's doing well. There's a lot of support. Um, really, really good that uh, there's a lot of fans and everything. And we have people that come by all the time, and they ask about the arena and, me, and the new arena and all that stuff. So it's been been really good. And the other thing that you guys do that's pretty unique is you have a lot of game-worn stuff. I saw some game-worn jerseys. You still got pucks, or are they all gone? Yeah, we still have some game-used pucks, and you can buy those online, too. 
Okay. Um, even some of the used gear that we have you can buy online or you can just come by and, and buy it. Um, we will be getting new gear once the season ends. I don't know what they're going to give us, but I'm sure ho or hopefully it'll be uh, some of the awesome helmets and uniforms <laughs> that they wore this season. All right. Well, Derek, thanks for your time yeah. today. Forks up and let's uh, let's get another win here in the uh, in the first regional and actually get to play the last game of the regional. How's that work out? Yeah, yeah pretty sweet. Yeah. Want to do something fun and interesting for your next group outing, family get together, or birthday party? Well, check out an ice rental at Oceanside Ice Arena. Oceanside offers private skating group rates that include figure or hockey skate rental for all skaters in the group. Oceanside also does private ice rental for hockey and other events as well. Call Adam Mims at 480-941-0944, extension 11, or visit them online at OceansideIceArena.net.
Johnny Walker, Joey Decord, and Brinson Peshna. We're going to start with an opening statement from Coach, then questions for the student athletes, and then we'll let them get out of here, and we'll do questions for Coach. So, opening statement, Coach. Uh, we're just we're excited to be here. Excited to be here and thrilled that the guys are fired up. Really good energy today in practice and, and all week leading up to today. Um, and uh, really excited to, uh, to play Quinnipiac tomorrow. If you have a question, raise your hand. We'll bring a mic to you for the student athletes. Roman Juszczyk from U.S. College Hockey. Uh, Joey, we talked a couple weeks ago. Uh, said you had about 70 family and friends when you guys played at BU. Have uh, the Dacker clan made their way down from New England yet? Yeah, my parents are here, and my little brother um, took a day off of school to drive down today, so he's pretty excited too. Um, and then uh, my Bill family actually from uh, Muskegon, they made it down here too, so a lot of family here to support me, so looking forward to the weekend. Any other questions for the student athletes? Raise your hand, we'll get a mic to you. Uh, guys, uh, when you uh has it hit you guys that you guys are actually here now? That you guys have uh, got to the first step in your long-term goal? Um, yeah, I think it definitely has. Um, if it doesn't look like we're shocked that we're here, it's because we're not. Um, I mean, this was our goal. Like my freshman class, mine and Dax's goal was our junior year to make the tournament and do some damage in the tournament. So. Um, it's definitely hit us, but it's uh, it's what we expected, so we're just really excited and we're going to take full advantage of this opportunity. Johnny, uh, at a moment college hockey news, that you know, your layup has been longer than the other guys even, so can you talk about uh, it has it been harder for you with all that time off, or do you feel like, you know, are you not going to know you're ready till the game starts tomorrow, or do you feel like you are? No, I'm, I'm definitely ready. Um, i had some time to... You know, we get rested and just like everyone else, uh, re-energize and, and ready to go for, for what matters here. So, um, like uh, Coach Power said, I'm really excited and, and I'm 100% ready to go. Any other questions for the student athletes? Thank you, guys. Thank you, Sam. If you have a question for Coach Powers, raise your hand, we got Mike to you. Coach, how are you? Good. Um, the layoff, obviously everyone's been talking about it, but uh, is there a right way or wrong way to do these things? Did you talk to anybody, like lean on some advice from other coaches as to what the best approach there was? Um, yeah, we talked to a few people. Um, I talked to some football guys, like kind of how they bowl prep. Um, uh, we talked actually to, uh, or had, had a contact uh, talk to London uh, in the OHL. They had a very long layoff, and uh, essentially they all said the same thing. As long as your guys buy into what you're doing, then, then you're doing the right thing, right? And uh, our guys kind of had the best of both worlds. They finished the season, uh, and they're the only team in college hockey's postseason that got to have a spring break. So we, 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 uh, we let them have spring break when we got back, and, and there's no better place to have it than Arizona State. We had spring training and beautiful weather, so they had that, and then we had two really good, hard-focused weeks, um, and uh, a lot of competing, uh, a lot of live game simulations with officials, um, and, uh, and it was good. It was really good. We had a public practice where we had a lot of people come out, so they kind of got the rust off in front of people that way in a different rink uh, in town. Uh, so we're, we're really pleased with how they look right now and where they're at. Sorry to follow up, that's definitely cool that you talked to all those different people, but what about, like, obviously a football coach can answer from a hockey standpoint, the, uh, you know, the hitting and how much you know, actual game circumstances you should do or not do. I mean, where, where's that balance between that and not want to get anyone hurt? Yeah, I mean, that, that you always run that risk, right? But, but to have them game ready, um, you, you, can't, you can't go halfway, right? They, they, they had to go hard, and there's a fine line when you play against teammates. You're not looking for guys to run each other in the wall or anything, but they had to play hard, mostly, you know, as it pertains to defending, you know, defending with urgency and how we want them to defend, and um, and, uh, and and it worked really well. I'm, I'm confident with how they look right now. 
coach uh, three years ago, you guys really got going. It's like if this was a program was a baby, the baby grew up pretty quick. It's like you guys haven't been afraid to face anybody anywhere. It's like you uh, went right away and started scheduling the big boys. How much has that helped just, you know, going to those different ranks and you know, meeting those teams and, you know, building upon that? Yeah, that, I mean, the plan was to, to be battle tested by the time we reached this point. Um, you know, we wanted to, to, you know, you know, to say in order to, to, to be the best, you have to beat the best, and you can't beat the best if you don't play them. We knew we were going to take a lot of lumps early. We did, um, and, and at this point, our juniors and seniors, especially, there's literally nothing they haven't seen. We've been to just about every venue that you can you can name that that uh, in college hockey, and, and have to travel quite a bit um, as an independent this year, especially as we. We got off to a good start. You have to treat every weekend like it's a playoff, like it's a single elimination uh, playoff game because you don't have that conference playoffs to, uh, to to give you second life. So our guys feel like they're prepared for this moment, and I think the last three years definitely have done that. Any other questions for Coach? Thank you. ASU versus Quinnipiac will follow the first game of the doubleheader here in Allentown between the Minnesota Duluth and Bowling Green as the Sun Devils make their NCAA tournament debut. We will have coverage for you all weekend long. I'm Paul Hornstein for College Hockey Southwest Weekly. Hey, Michael here from M-Drive. My dad, a world-class scientist, actually made M-Drive for himself to stay active and continue enjoying life. And yes, M-Drive supports healthy testosterone, but it's so much more. M-Drive is the everyday supplement to fuel your drive with more energy and more strength. Listen, we'd love for you to try M-Drive too. Visit mdriveformen.com and we'll give you 20% off your first purchase. Just type in the code DRIVE at checkout. Refind your prime with M-Drive. All right, All right. Welcome in, hockey fans in the desert southwest and in Allentown, Pennsylvania. My long distance devil has moved down the road a little bit west, about what, three hours, Paul? Yeah, about three hours, a little west and a little south. I hear you. So there you go, southwest, there we go. <laughs> so there you go. The desert southwest, not quite, but we're getting there. We're getting there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Scott Strandy in with you on College Hockey Southwest Weekly. Not long distance devils, but I do have Paul Hornstein with me. This is the real thing, folks. This is the NCAA regional tournament. I'm back in Phoenix in the uh, College Hockey Southwest Weekly studios. Paul is uh, in a motel room right now in Allentown after spending the day checking out practice, checking out the ASU press conference, checking out the facilities. PPNL Center? PPL Center? Is that what this is called, Paul? Yeah, the PPL Center. Um... It doesn't look like an arena from the outside, but it's really nice on the inside. It really, um, you know, I didn't know what to expect as I pulled up uh, trying to find a parking spot. And because uh, it's in whatever the downtown ish area and I it just looked like a building. And when I got inside there, the, the, the facility itself is really, really nice. Fantastic. That's good to hear. So no, no problems getting there. You got inside, got a chance to uh, see a problem. <laughs> that was an eye roll with that one there. <laughs> uh, anybody that's ever driven around uh, the Major Deacon Expressway and the Cross Bronx and the George Washington Bridge <laughs> and the disaster that are New Jersey roads, to say I got there okay is not quite accurate, but I got there on time. Let's put it that way. All right. So so let's get the feeling right from the start. You talked about the arena a little bit, but talk about the guys when you saw them on the ice. What did you think of uh, Arizona State Sun Devil on the ice in Allentown, PA? Um, the practice, the session they had, uh, it looked crisp. It looked sharp. Uh, you know, it's not the same, obviously, as actually going up against somebody else. But uh, everybody looked like they were calm. Um, it didn't look like they were too wound up because it looked like most of the passes were on target. Um, it looked like uh, the coaches didn't really have to go over too much uh, when they talked uh, through the drills. So it looked pretty crisp and it looked pretty clean. Uh, hopefully it translates to tomorrow. You and I talked about the press conference that followed. I see they had uh, Coach Powers and Johnny Walker, Joey DeCord and Brinson Fashion up front. Yep. 
but uh, we talked off camera. What can you really say, right? It's repeating the same thing over and over again, but your thoughts on the press conference and what the guys had to say? Was there anything new from anybody? Uh, it really was, like you said, you know, from our perspective, we know what the ASU story is. Do they overcome the rust? Uh, how do they bounce back from the poor performance at Minnesota? Uh, how is the, the travel going to affect them? Uh, the, the usual questions, we, I, I, we could have just had some holograms up there and they would have given the same answers. I'm not trying to knock the guys for doing it, but really that's what you expected. Um, I spoke uh, with the, one of the guys covering Minnesota Duluth, and as we both agreed, from his perspective, the story is ASU and Bowling Green because he's asked the Duluth people the same questions for the last two weeks, 95,000 times. So at this point, everybody's just ready for the puck to drop and let's go. You know what? And the puck has dropped in some of the other regionals today. We have some teams that are moving on to the Elite Eight, if we want to call it that in hockey. But um, as far as the Sun Devils go, they're going to wait a little longer because they play the very last game tomorrow night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time, 4.30 out here in the Pacific Coast. But talk a little bit about uh, some of the games that happened. Let's start with, uh, with UMass and what they did uh, to Harvard today up in the Northeast Regional. Uh, well, let's, I, I have to come clean. I was a thousand percent wrong. I thought UMass would, uh, uh would not come out of the gate. Uh, Harvard got an early goal overturned. Um, and that kind of probably saved UMass from clutching their sticks a little too hard. Um, their first couple of goals were, as we say, of the ugly variety. The puck was bouncing around. Took a fortunate bounce for UMass a couple of times, and they built a 2 nothing lead. Uh, and they got a couple of really nice goals at the end, especially on a breakaway. Um, but uh, Harvard couldn't score, and uh, UMass uh, advances in the game where I thought the one seed would lose. Uh, I think you agreed with me, but I'm not sure. I, I, don't did. I did agree with you. I did not think that they were going to win that game, but uh, they, they shocked me as well. So uh, let's jump yeah. over to the other game that was played today in uh, in Fargo. Uh, that one was a, a big one with um, Denver. Sna I, I don't know about Denver. I just don't get it. All season long, I've been going like, do they belong where they belong? And then I looked at Ohio State, and I'm going like, okay, well, maybe these are two pretty evenly teams. But Denver really outplayed them today in a 2 nothing win, didn't they? You know, I was – after we had all the ASU stuff with the press conference and all the – uh, stuff with the, the watching the practice. I was watching that game with some of the, the same Minnesota Duluth guys, and we're all just shaking our heads and saying it's Denver playing Denver hockey. Uh, right. They got 13 shots. Yeah. Denver got 13 shots. How do you win two nothing on that? Uh, they 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 got a goal uh, late in the second period. Uh, they're averaging a shot. Every four and a half minutes, uh, Ohio State won the faceoff battle like six to one or seven to one, uh, almost doubled them in shots, and yet it never looked like they had a chance to score. And <laughs> Denver did that to North Dakota in the NCHC quarterfinals, and they just we're just sitting there shaking our heads. Uh, Denver had a power play; they didn't get any. They didn't even I don't think they took any shots. Forget about shots. I don't think they even took any shots. So we're sitting there watching, and we're all looking at each other like, Denver's not even interested in scoring anymore. They got their one goal, and that was that. They were happy, and they shut down Ohio State. And that was that. It just it was a weird, weird game to watch, as I think most of Denver's games have been in the last month. So, so the first two regional games that were played are – 4 nothing and 2 nothing shutouts with UMass moving on and Denver moving on. Now we go back to the Northeast again. There's another game that's about to wrap up, or how close are we? Uh, we got about six, and as we tape this, is about, are we allowed to use the word tape since this is uh, 2019? Oh, yeah. sure. Okay. Sure. Uh, or maybe report this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, it's about six and a half to go in this game, and Clarkson is up 2-1. Uh, Nico Sturm, their captain and best player, uh, was ejected for a hit from behind. Oh. Uh, 
Um, I thought it was a five, but I don't know if I would have thrown him out of the game for the hit. Uh, he didn't extend his arms. He definitely hit him in the numbers. I definitely thought it was a five, but uh, they they ejected him from the game, and they're winning two to one now with six and a half to go. And uh, it's almost like watching the Denver game because Clarkson only has about thirteen or fourteen shots, and uh, Notre Dame's got twenty nine. Oh, I'm sorry, it's twenty nine to fifteen in shots right now, and. Clarkson's winning two to one. Jake Kiley is doing what Jake Kiley does. And uh, that's where that game stands right now. And Clarkson's just trying to run out the clock like Denver did. <laughs> well, before we, we get to the last one, let's just stop right here and say, we thought this was going to be some great goaltending. And that's what we have right now, apparently, with only uh, a handful of goals being scored across the board today in the regionals. How are we looking on the other regional back in Fargo? Uh, well, right now, American International. Right now, with five and a half to go in period number two, uh, you're sitting down, right? Uh, I am. I am. Sure. Yeah. How secure is that chair? Because yeah, AIC is winning two nothing. <laughs> Well, hockey fans in the desert southwest, if you love college hockey, I just have uh, three letters for you. W-O-W. Wow, what an opening day in the uh, NCAA regionals. Uh, as we saw, probably one of the biggest upsets in, in a few years. Uh, AIC, the Atlantic hockey champion, the number 16 seeded team in the tournament, shocked St. Cloud State with a 2-1 victory. Uh, Coach Eric Lang and the uh, the guys, the Yellow Jackets from American International, are moving on to play uh, Denver tomorrow in the uh, the championship of the West Regional. Denver, the number two seed, got by Ohio State today on a two nothing shutout, and uh, what a matchup that's going to be tomorrow. The uh, Cinderella team, the American International uh, College team, is uh, it's just been incredible all year to win the Atlantic get in as the number 16 seed and then shock the number one seed St. Cloud State Huskies and uh, advance. Uh, I also want to tell you a little bit about the uh, Northeast Regional. It was played up in uh, Manchester, New Hampshire where the number one seed UMass proved uh, that they, they, they deserve to be a number one seed in the regional, folks. 4 nothing shutout over Harvard, a crosstown rival up in uh, New Hampshire, New England area, uh, Boston area, I should say. And uh, in the second game, what a thriller. Clarkson and Notre Dame went to overtime. Cam Morrison got the game winner for Notre Dame to send them into the uh, regional final against UMass. 3-2, the official score there with uh, Notre Dame ousting number two seed Clarkson in that regional. So here's your breakdown for tomorrow, folks. It's going to be a really busy day of hockey. The, uh, the regional finals that will be played, AIC versus Denver in the West Regional and uh, UMass and Notre Dame in the Northeast Regional. Then play begins in the other two regions. So a lot of hockey for you tomorrow in the East Regional. Number one seed Minnesota State will take on Providence in Providence, Rhode Island, the Dunkin' Donuts Center there. And Northeastern, the number two seed, will take on Cornell in the second game of that region. And then the one that we're all waiting for out here in the West is Minnesota Duluth and Bowling Green in the Midwest Regional at the PPL Center. And Allentown, Pennsylvania, and your uh, Arizona State Sun Devils will be taking on Quinnipiac in the uh, second game, the final game, 7.30 p.m. start out on the East Coast, 4.30 here in the Pacific time zone. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun, folks. The Sun Devils are uh, seemingly loose. I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the stuff we brought you with our man Paul Hornstein, our long-distance devil, if you will, that uh, made the trip from Long Island, New York, over to Allentown for us. He's going to be there all weekend, giving us some live updates when we can. And, of course, a recap tomorrow night after the Sun Devils compete in their first ever NCAA regional tournament. So March Madness is normally labeled for NCAA basketball, folks, but... March Madness has struck the NCAA hockey tournament as well. We have half the uh, Elite Eight, if you will, uh, in place. Tomorrow we'll have the other Elite Eight 
And we'll also have two participants for the Frozen Four, which this year will be played uh, at the Key Bank Center in Buffalo, April 11th and 13th. Uh, the Frozen Four, if you will, going up to Buffalo, New York. So looking to be a lot of fun. Let's hope our Sun Devils can get the, uh, the uh, Midwest Regional crown and make that trip to Buffalo as well. We'll know a little more this time tomorrow night, but today I want to thank my friends uh, over at uh, our corporate partners, I should say, over at Oceanside Ice Arena for letting me stomp in and kind of stomp around the, uh, the pro shop there and take a look at all the great Sun Devil stuff they have. Um, a, a big thank you to Derek Chubinski, who uh, the pro shop manager there was able to come on camera with me for a few minutes and tell us a little bit about all the things that you can get that pertain to Sun Devil hockey game used pucks game used jerseys and equipment along with the official adidas t-shirt of the ncaa regional thanks again to derek for uh, for stepping in for us thanks to my man paul hornstein who uh, couldn't do this without him as he made the trip for us over there and uh, looking forward to paul's reports all weekend long uh, as the sun devils look to make history yet again this time in the ncaa regional so for uh, my man paul hornstein i'm scott strandy live here in the College Hockey Southwest Weekly Studios, saying goodnight for now.